like Wim Hof, for example. That guy's, from what I've heard about that guy, he's wild. Um, Who? Who is this? Wim Hof. He, excuse me, he um, has figured out some interesting things about our, our body and how it responds to our breathing patterns. <clears throat> so our body can, or our body reads our breathing or is in control of our breathing and our breathing pattern in a lot of ways. So much so that there are certain physiological responses that are now tied to our breathing pattern. And so what we can do is we can directly, just, we can decide what our breathing, breathing pattern is going to be. Is it going to be in and out through the nose? How many breaths per minute? How deep are the breaths going to be? We can control all these little variables. And every one of those variables changes the way the mechanism of breathing works for us, which changes the outputs in terms of you know what it does. And so what Wim Hof has done is, you know, I think um, I might butcher the story here, but basically his, him and his wife were really depressed. She ended up committing suicide. And then that oh, spiraled him even further. But he basically used that as his catalyst to go down like a personal development path where he started meditating and doing these breathing exercises to try to cure his depression because he said reading about the monks or something like that um kind of inspired him gave him the idea to try it and you know so for a long long time he just started doing all these meditations and breathing exercises and started to figure things out and the crazy, the crazy part to this whole story is that um, he gained control of certain metabolic functions. He could control his body temperature, for example. He could control his immune system. He could ramp his immune system up if he wanted to. Um, he could increase or he could in, you know, upregulate and downregulate his heartbeat almost at will just by mildly fluctuating his breathing pattern. Um, and that gave whole different advantages in different circumstances do you, you know? think that's do you think that's like what monks do like because i mean i, I don't know if part it's myth, it, yeah. but, but monks like don't eat like they just don't eat or some um, of them do like it's it, there it's been so known that some of them like just don't eat yeah well there's a whole lot there so um i think it is similar to what the monks were doing um in terms of you know gaining higher function order control over your body um i think he did it a different way though uh so there's man there's so much to unpack there when for so for example just when you're sitting there for 18 hours a day and that's what you do is you sit there for 18 hours a day and then you go to sleep for six hours or four or five hours and you have an hour's worth of time to go to the bathroom and take a bath and whatever right um now say that's your daily routine you're you're burning bare minimum calories so the amount of food you need to eat on a daily just to maintain your body weight is <clears throat> going to be a fraction of what the average person sure. who's spending their whole day walking around being active <clears throat> um and plus since you're meditating your mind isn't being super active either you're you're shifting into different um uh, brainwave patterns um and so yeah they they could probably go extended periods without eating and without drinking because they're they're not putting any exertion on their body in any way um whereas what wim hof is doing is it is a completely different kind of meditation so one is um there's a couple different categories and i'm probably not going to get them all but there's like mindfulness there's mind emptiness and then there's like which is uh you know one's transcendental meditation and the other one is uh, it's a different kind, but it's, you know, one is you're trying to clear your mind of all thought. The other is you're trying to, <clears throat> in an orderly fashion, fill your mind with everything. Um, and so one, you know, the first one is, is any distraction, anything that anytime you have a thought, anytime a sound comes in, your purpose is to redivert your awareness to nothingness as much as, as often and for as long as you can until eventually you tune everything out i've gotten to the point to where i couldn't feel my body anymore um you know i couldn't hear anything going around me the only thing that <clears throat> i could <clears throat> excuse me the only thing that i could see if you want to call it seeing was just like this 
mist almost like a fog that just changed in color constantly and almost felt like I was kind of just slowly moving through it um and that was after about 10 or 15 minutes of just trying to empty my mind but then there's the mindfulness um meditation where you're focusing on certain things um and you're trying to deliberately control your awareness and that you're trying to direct your awareness to a specific stimulus, whether it's a sound, whether it's a sensation, whether it's a thought. Um, and uh, in the latter of the two, you're trying to do you know, just the opposite. But Wim Hof, for example, he can sit down and he like scientists came out and like hooked him up to all these devices and shit out in the middle of Antarctica or some shit. <clears throat> he sat oh, is that where he flight. lived? No, it's, it's not where he lived. It's where he went to prove a point. Um, he, he'd been saying since the seventies that he'd been able to control his body temperature to such an extent that he could survive like minus 20 degrees, no problem. And nobody believed him until finally one day, I don't remember when, but he got, I think it was back in the eighties or the seventies. He got a bunch of scientists to come out with him. Um, and he, I guess he paid for it for him to come out and, and, and do all of this. And oh, wow. they hooked him up to these machines and they, he got his body temperature up to like 102 degrees Fahrenheit. And it got down to like, it was like minus 38 degrees outside. And he's in shorts, literally no shoes, no socks, no shirt, no hat, no gloves, nothing but a pair of like, like Steve Irwin down under in the outback type of shorts. So he, like cargo shorts? Just like, just like paper thin, just sitting out there, fucking meditation pose. But he's... He's breathing like he's running from a bear, but it's in a very specific pattern, a very specific rhythm. And his well, body and a temperature of one hundred two, that's not good. Bright, well, no, he he brought his body temperature up to to show that like it's not just I can maintain my body temperature, but I can bring it up. But it was also because they injected him. They injected him with the bubonic plague while he was out there. Because he was also proving to Wait, them. Wait, what? Yeah. And like six or eight hours later, they tested his blood for it because he sat out there for the whole time just doing this breathing exercise, just beat bright red, steam coming off of him, freezing the second it got into the air because it's so cold. Everyone else is intense and in all of this shit. He's out there. Right, the right. Um, and, you know, so they injected him with all these different pathogens and shit. And um, basically, he's like, I just ramped up my immune system and burned it out. Like, so he, he fucking, like, and it's all on paper. It's like, there's there's video documentation of it, of it happening and shit. Like, like he's out there hooked up to it. It's burned it out, but well, not, like, like not, not like sweating. He didn't well, sweat he, it he out. Call, like he, he called it burning it out. But on a scientific level, he basically antagonized his immune system by manipulating his stress hormones which he did by manipulating his breathing pattern. So he, breath, tricked, yeah. he tricked his body into thinking he was already sick. And so his body's immune system went up to 110%. And so by the time they even injected him with the bubonic plague, his body had spears just fucking flying through the air everywhere because everything was already attacking everything. Oh um, my gosh. And so he basically just, he just put his body on red alert, but by controlling his breathing pattern, which induced a specific type of stress hormone, yeah. which induced a I wonder, certain type of response. So it's, what we can do is wild. And the I wonder there. If, if there's any risk to that. And, and I don't know much of, Probably. I, don't I, know, mean, I don't know much about biology, but I, I know a little bit. And like, I wonder if, if it can cause like an overstimulation of like white blood cell or yeah, like white blood cells. So I wonder if there's a risk of like, like a cancer growth or like, like something because yeah, I would imagine you're, like, you're, if you're amping up your immune system, your body is purging itself of anything that isn't super healthy. Um, same, same thing applies with fasting. When you deprive your body of enough carbohydrates or enough food for a long enough period of time, your body yeah. has to go through this cleansing process whereby it goes through and it identifies from rank order of, of least performing all the way up to the, to the best performing. It will start to eliminate cells. It will start to kill off cells that aren't performing well. And those cells die off and that opens up room for your body to grow new cells in their place, which is a new fresh cell that's functioning at 100%. 
And so what it ends up doing is that you're, you're, while you're depriving your body of nutrition, it's like, okay, we've got to go into hyper efficient mode. We can't handle all these stragglers right now. It's kind of like what happens when the food at the grocery store runs out. The fattest people are the first ones to starve because they're the slowest to get there, you know? And so I know that sounds kind of harsh, but it's, it's just the reality of it. Um, well, I mean, right now, not, not nowadays we have cars, but, um, still though, it, it kind of still applies. Um, if you're not physically fit, you're not, you're going to have a much harder time getting the resources you need when, you know, say for example, the grocery stores run out of food. Um, and the same thing applies with our bodies, that it gets rid of the most of inefficient individuals. It has to. There's no other option. There's not enough resources to go around, or so it thinks. But that's you controlling your environment to induce a physiological response. And that's what fasting is. That's you know, partly because I was 300 pounds when I moved up here to Michigan. And now I've, I've been 180 for, let's see, I moved in the mid-2017. It was, I don't know, February of 2016 is when I moved here. And so it was by uh, 2018, I had lost all the weight. And so you're talking six years now, six years running. And I haven't changed my diet. I don't exercise anymore. It's just, I basically tricked my body into thinking that it's that it's not gonna have food tomorrow. And that makes it stay lean. 